Good morning, guys. Welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. We are having conversations about your everyday life and finances. My name is JoJo. Y'all meet your JoJo Waddell. I am your Live Past Crazy Specialist. I am the only Live Past Crazy Specialist. So what better place to be here than to be with me to figure out how you are going to live past crazy. Technology did not want me to be great today, but that is okay. It's going to be okay. Let me get logged in here as I wait for my fearless calls to join. I hope everybody is having a great week. Hope you enjoyed the show on yesterday. What did you think about it? What did you think about when somebody challenges you, challenges the new concept of you? What do you think about that? How does that make you feel when you feel like you have to <clears throat> explain something to people? Let me grab some water. How does that make you feel? Good morning, Charlene. Hope you guys are doing well. Let me see. If I can't slam in, I'm. I think I'm. I'm gonna have to do it on my end, Lynn. <clears throat> At least I'm trying anyway. That's what I'm trying to do. Let's see how we doing? Good morning, and how do you do? I like to introduce myself to you. <laughs> my name is Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Lord, don't, don't be rolling me into the shenanigans this early in the morning. What? Let me tell you something, honey. If I gotta get, we've got to get it this morning because right. technology did not want me to be great this morning either. Okay. So it's gonna be okay. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is. Good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Fearless Morning Show. And I know JoJo said that, but I'm gonna say it again. Where we're having confessions and conversations about your everyday life and your finances. Mm -hmm. And I am Lynn Demons, America's number one financial rebound coach. So we're going to go ahead and get started with our um, yes. quote for this morning. And our quote today is by uh, Miss Lucille Ball. Lucy, <laughs> as you, I don't know, some of y'all might be too young, right, to remember. They, they don't know nothing about that. They Thank you, Charlene. Know. Charlene says she's cheering with us. Thank you. <laughs> awesome sauce. So the, the, the quote this morning, guys, is I rather regret, regret the things I have done than the things I have not done. Let me repeat mm. that because I messed it up a little bit. I'd rather regret the things I have done than regret the things I have not done. And I think that is so true for me. One of the things that um, I never in a million years thought that I would enjoy going to China. I'm like, why am I going to go to China? I can't even understand what they're saying. And those little picture things that they draw for their letters. I'm like, what in the heck does that mean? So how in the world am I going to be able to survive in China? But guys, I'll say I would not have changed that experience for anything in the world, even though they thought I was Tyra Banks for some reason. I guess you were tall in the like, hair. We all you can be like, Tyra today. Go ahead, girl. Right, right. Walking through the airport, it's complete silence in the airport, guys. Um, so if you ever go to into Beijing, be quiet in the airport. It's completely different from the uh, airports here in the States, right? <laughs> but we're just talking, having these conversations. You hit, you know, everything's going on. Nobody's paying attention because there's so much white noise. That's what I call right. it. So much noise going on in the background. But when we landed in Beijing and, and got off the plane, and I was like, oh, my gosh, you can hear a pin drop. The only <laughs> people talking in the airport were the Americans. And I'm really? like, okay. I think I might want to be quiet over here because I'm not trying to be arrested in China. That's too far away. <laughs> so, guys, <laughs> I say that to say, guys, you know, take those shots. Don't regret not having done certain things in your life. I mean, you will be, I mean, you will be like, wow, I did that. 
right? Yeah, Whether you enjoy right. it or not, you'll be like, wow, I did that. I can mark that off my bucket list. So whatever those bucket list items are, go ahead and knock them off. And I hope investing is on your list. So you can go ahead and do that. Don't regret not doing that in your lifetime. That's what we're going to be talking about today. What are those um, investing, uh, I'm sorry, investing myths you need to release today? Uh, so uh, anything you want to add to Miss Lucille Ball's quote this morning about- I was going to say that, um, and then here, you, you think that you would regret other things or regret when you do something that- um, may have been not in the best interest of you, but sometimes you really, you really regret the things that you should. And remember that shoulda, coulda, woulda. Sometimes you regret those that, and those hurt the most. Like, man, I knew I should have. And one of mine is I, when there was a Soviet Union, <laughs> I had the opportunity to go there for school and my parents was like, uh, heck to the now, but I wish I would have taken that opportunity. But at 13, I didn't really have a whole lot of say or whether I left the country or not. <laughs> but that's always one of the things I wish I would have been able to do. And sometimes that can hurt more. So guys, do do it today. Take some action today. All right, I'm done, Lynn. All right. Awesome sauce. All right. Time to have that financial confession and conversation this morning, guys. <clears throat> the topic this morning is what are those investing myths you need to release today? So I have nine for you. So make sure you're writing these down. Investing myths you need to release today um, that can change your life, guys. Why am I talking about things you need to release? Because it's about our mindset. If we don't have our mindset right, we won't do anything else. And I, let me tell you this. Let me be let me be 100% transparent in this moment. When I first started investing, and I'm talking about beyond my 401k, beyond my retirement account, because I was thinking, I'm sitting there thinking to myself, oh, the experts got this, right? I have this pro. He's managing the funds. So I'm good on that front. But then when I started educating myself and started investing my money myself, and then uh -huh. I sat there for a minute, you know what came over me? Fear. Uh -huh. I was like, oh my gosh, my money's really in my control. I can't blame it on somebody else when I lose, right? Right. And it is the most debilitating uh, concept right for that was it was very debilitating to me it was like I, I was i was like a deer in headlights when i started initially investing i was like oh my gosh this is really all my responsibility so why do i share that story with you guys it is scary when you first think about it and start doing it at least it was for me right because this was not mm -hmm. something that i was accustomed to doing that was something that the experts that's what the harvard guys do right that's what the wall street mongers do right and it was a i mean guys it was such a huge learning curve but today i am so glad that i pressed the gas that i pushed past that because like I said, it's a game changer for you when you start to recognize and identify all of those different opportunities that are out there for you. So that's why today our financial confession and conversation is looking at those nine investing myths that you need to release today, right? And I didn't put fear in there, but fear is definitely one of them. One of them. And the thing about fear is it'll go away for a little while, but then it creeps back in there right mm -hmm. when things happen it cre it always keeps creeping back in when things happen but what we have to recognize guys and this is the beauty of it and i've known this for years but i didn't hear it until i heard it fear is false evidence appearing real where does fear come from mm -hmm. we've embedded this we've cooked this up we've doctored this in our minds and it comes to the forefront fear doesn't it's not even real y'all Think about it. Even when we were kids, you were afraid of the dark because you thought there were some monsters or the boogeyman, right, underneath yep. your bed. Where in the yep. heck did the boogeyman come from? Something we conjured up in our minds, y'all. We conjured it up in our minds. So I, I need you to catch that. 
And, and uh, this was one of the things. Who shared this? I, and I heard, uh, what was his name? The other, I don't know if it was Jonathan Sprinkle who shared this or somebody shared this. Mm -hmm. Fear is in your past or fear is in your future. It's never in your present. So if you're That's present true. in the moment, That's you can true. get past that thing. And I was like, wow, that is so profound. Mm -hmm. That is so profound. And yes, the mind is a powerful tool if we use it the right way so guys you got to mm -hmm. understand that and make sure you recognize that and i know we've heard it over and over because even as a kid I, I remember uh reverend dogan when i was a child he would always say fears false evidence appearing real we heard that over and over and over it was just a nice little mnemonic device that we you know put in our back pocket but you don't hear it until okay. you hear it right mm -hmm. so what are those nine investing myths we need to push past right so we can overcome that guys and get to the get to the real right that god has put out there for us he said because i've come jesus i've come so that you may have life and have it more abundantly now it's not only about money <clears throat> let's be real it's not only about money but every decision that you make in your life in some way shape form or fashion is tied back to money. See, there are six degrees of separation. You hear us talk about that. And many people talk about that in the concept or the framework of looking at people. But the same thing with your monies, right? All Every decision that you make is in some way, shape, form, or fashion tied back to monies, right? So let me get into these nine investing myths before I, I go into a completely different lesson than, than uh, what I wanted to share, a conversation I wanted to have with you all this morning. But the first one, guys, the first myth that you need to get rid of today is I have to make six figures to invest, right? I have to make six figures to invest. Why? Because we have not learned how to take control of our money. And that is the key. Uh -huh. That is the key. Learning how to control your money or your money controls your situation, right? Almost right. every problem can be solved with a check. That y'all, yes, what it, money answereth all things, right? <laughs> hey, to <the> man, <laughs> to a certain extent, right? Now, yeah. we, I, I joke a little bit in that, but it is truth. It is truth. Almost every problem could be to some extent, as long as we keep one principle at the forefront, guys. And that's Matthew six and thirty three. Keep put God first, right? Mm -hmm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. See, it's priorities too. See, but that's not the lesson today, but it, that's very important. That's very important as we talk about these nine investing myths you need to release today. So in looking at these, you have get rid of that, guys. You don't have to have six figures to start investing. Once you start investing, you'll get those six figures. Then that'll bum ass to your seven figures. But you have to learn and understand how to do these things in the correct way. So number two, my life has to be perfect before I can invest. My life has to be perfect before I can invest. I have to have everything paid off. I have to have my children already in college. I have to do all of these things before I can start to invest. Guys, get rid of the excuses. If you yes. get nothing else that I said today, take those five words. Get rid of the excuses right? That is simply an excuse where we think about perfection. There was only one perfect being, right? That we've ever learned about. Mm -hmm. Even though we strive for perfection, we'll never get there. So you should just completely get rid of that, guys, because it's simply an excuse. It holds you back. Exactly. It's an excuse. It holds you back. It's a barrier. Whatever terminology you want to put there, guys, it's holding you it's keeping you from doing what you need to do to build generational wealth. See, ultimately, that's what we're, that's the end game. How do we now build generational wealth so we can pass it on so our, the next generation and the generations after that don't have to worry, struggle, move from the same position that we have because they'll have what they say, a leg up, if you will, right? And then they can now take that skill because investing is a skill. Trust and believe it is a skill because you have to learn and master the skill to be able to build generational wealth. 
And then you can now transfer and teach your children, right, about this skill mm -hmm. as well. So there are different things now that you'll be able to do as a result of this process. So number three, the number three investing myth that you need to release today is that you have to be good with numbers. If you're not good with numbers, it's okay. I'll help you out with that, guys. I've already created some spreadsheets, and I've simplified some of those spreadsheets because I know, I know me, I want to see everything across the board, and then I'll go in. You can sort and filter spreadsheets, and I know everyone's not good with Excel, and that's okay. And I went through and I simplified the processes to break down the steps because I know my husband, he'll tell me this all the time. He's like, that just looked like a whole bunch of information on a piece of paper to me. That's just too much, right? He likes to break it down, and he'll do 10 different things, but he'll put them all in a Word document. I said, baby, it's so much easier if you put everything in a spreadsheet. He said, let me do the Word documents. You handle the spreadsheets. I said, all right, we'll do that, right? <laughs> but you don't have to be a genius with the numbers things, guys, Okay. You don't have to be a genius, uh, but I, what I've done is actually created some plug-and-play spreadsheets for you for when you're looking at different things to identify, you know, what's that wonderful business that I want to invest in? So mm -hmm. pull back from that excuse, right? That's another one. Get rid of the excuses. That's another excuse we need to get rid of today or another myth, right, mm -hmm. that we need to bust. Um, so I hope we're busting them out this morning. That was number three. How much time? How much time? Looking, I don't want to go too long. You I to finish some of these. Seven thirty. You at seven thirty-four? All right, because I know um, I have nine. So let me just do one or two more, and then I'll finish okay. the others tomorrow. I think that's okay. good. Good morning, guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Please don't forget to share, 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 share this video out because I know there. are many more of us in our communities that do not understand, do not know how to invest, don't have a clue as to where to begin, and they need the help. See, I'm giving you the structure, building the framework. All you got to do is follow the path. I'm putting mm -hmm. out the breadcrumbs. Was that a Goldilocks? Not, no, that wasn't yeah, Goldilocks. Uh, Hans Hansel and Gretel. Goldilocks. Was it Hansel and Gretel? Somebody. Yes, yeah. Somebody left the breadcrumbs. So yes. <laughs> anyway, I'm giving you the breadcrumbs. This is the trail. These are the stepping stones, right, to get to your <laughs> next in your finances so you can start investing. See, I'm helping you out. What are those things you got to push past so you can get to that? You don't have to be good with your numbers. That was number three. So let me recap really quickly. Number one was, you don't have to make six figures in order to start investing, right? It's about money management and identifying the priorities for you. Number two, your life does not have to be perfect. Let it go. Y'all going to make me break out in the frozen. Let it go. I, think one of my, I love that movie. <laughs> and then number three. I have to be good with numbers. That is a myth, guys. As long as you know the formula, you know the keys, the steps, and I break that down for you, um, you'll be able to get to your next as far as your invest investing is concerned. And number four, I lost money when I initially tried to invest. Therefore, I failed, and it's over. One of the quotes that we've shared here on the morning show is you can't enjoy a win until you have failed, right? Mm -hmm. You can't enjoy a win until you have failed. And please know, trust and believe that there are some opportunities. There are some times when you are going to lose money in your investing. But what you have to do is figure out the formula. Well, I figured out a formula for you. What you have to do is now put it into practice. What is the formula now that's going to help you to win more? What's the probability of success, right? How do you <coughs> improve the percentage of winning over your percentage of loss of losses? Okay? E even in sports, any team, if you, I ask you what's their record, they'll have a winning score versus a losing score. Like JoJo, what's Duke's go? Duke, what's Duke's uh? Girl, Tar Heels don't play. You know we know Duke fans over here. <laughs> I know, I know. I, was just I know you did that. Where we gonna get me hot early this morning? <laughs> right. We lost. It's okay. I love 
my tea. <laughs> I am so messy with you, but guys, this is the boy. There are wins and losses in every team, even the best teams, right? Yeah. Have wins and losses, the same thing in investing. But the thing is, is having a higher probability on the side of your wins than the side of your losses and figuring out how to do that. I help you to do that. And the last thing, I've never learned to invest. Therefore, it's not for me. I never <clears throat> to invest, therefore it's not for me. Well, I'm providing the education for you that's going to help you to get past that so you can understand what does that terminology mean so that you'll know what all of those different things mean. And then when you actually are flipping through the channels, you're probably not watching MSNBC when they're having our money watch or something like that. And but when you're flipping through the channels and you hear them say certain terminology, you'll be like, oh, OK, so that's what that means now. Before they were speaking in another language that I had no clue as to what it was. But I teach you guys so that you can understand that and not only understand the concepts that they're presenting to you, but how do you also now learn how to play the game? How do you apply it to your life so that you can win in your investing? So I said I was at <coughs> five this morning. So let me do a quick recap, if you don't mind, of the five investing myths that you need to release today. The five investing myths you need to release today. Number one was you had to make six figures. You don't have to make six figures. You need to know how to manage what you have first and foremost. And if you haven't learned how to do that, that's priority. That should be priority number one for you and your finances, right? Yeah. As far as your finances are concerned, you need to learn how to manage that because if you don't control your money, your money's going to control you. Simple as that. Uh, and then number two, I'm sorry, I was trying <clears throat> to go ahead to the others. Number two, your life doesn't have to be perfect. There was only one perfect being, so let that go. You're not going to reach it. You never will right? Mm -hmm. Some, that's something that should be simple for us. We're not going to be perfect, so just let it go. Um, number three, I have to be good with numbers. No, you don't have to be good with numbers, but you do have to know which numbers you need to look at to determine whether or not this is going to be a great opportunity for you. See, that's what's most important. That is the key for you in investing. Number four, <clears throat> I, um, I failed in my investing i lost money right so i'm not going to do that anymore essentially it's the mentality that you get you learn from those failures you press the gas and you push on guys because fear is going to continue to creep in no matter where you are is until you start doing this over and over and over it's about building confidence just like yeah. we talk about the fact that you have to be confident in yourself <clears throat> Then you build to the point where you can now become confident in your skill, right? As far as your investing is concerned. So there are things that you can do to move to your next. And number five, the last thing, um, you never invested. So that's obviously not for you. That's why I say, guys, get the education you need. Um, if you want to learn more about getting the education that you know need, go over to bit.ly slash wwinvest. Um, to look at the information we have there. I also have an online Facebook group. I need you guys to, if you want in, go over there and join that Facebook group. That's where I'm going to start training you in some of the uh, basics, right, around your investing. Some of you are already in the group. I put several <coughs> things in there, some freebies in there for you around your investing. But you need to get your investment uh, wealth education planner completed. For those of you who have joined, I, I posted that yesterday. Go ahead and get that completed so that you can go ahead and start looking at what it is you would like to do as far as your goals are concerned um, and get those back to me so that I can be more intentional in what I'm providing to you. And what I'm hearing from some of you is you don't have a clue as to where to start. And that's okay. We'll start. We'll start on baby step number one, right? We'll start with baby step number one. But you have to know and identify where you are and it's about being truthful with yourself it's not about being truthful with lynn right because lynn is doing with her money what lynn wants to do with her money because i went through the same process guys i went through the same process and this process will help you to take a good hard look at where you are where you want to be why do you want to be in this space 
And how do you now start making the steps to get to your next as far as your investing is concerned? So for those of you who have joined the group, make sure that you complete that wealth education planner so that we can get the ball rolling. What I'll start doing inside of that investing incubator. So this is the pre-work for our actual live investing incubator workshop that we'll be doing. All right. This is the pre-work. And some of this um, work will also be introduced in the Love Your Life, Love Your Finances <coughs> course. All right. So we're building the foundation. We're building a solid foundation. Right. So that we can now move to our next so that you can now protect your investments, guys, mm -hmm. and build generational wealth. That's the end goal. But you need to know what are the look fors? What are the things I need to be doing, right? To now in, mm -hmm. to manage my funds more appropriately. How do I do this? How do I identify a wonderful <clears throat> business? How do I know that I can invest in this particular company and that it's going to make me money over the long haul? What are the indicators? What are the pieces of information I need to be looking at? Have you ever stopped to think why the CEOs and on those company pages release their annual reports, right? Because mm -hmm. they're, if they're exchanging within the trade, uh, within the stock markets or within any of the markets for that matter, there are requirements from the SEC, the Securities and Exchange Commission, that they have to be truthful, they have to be transparent about what's happening within that company. Mm -hmm. So I train you and I teach you what are the things you need to be looking for to determine whether or not this is going to be a wonderful buying opportunity for you. Should you be investing in this company? <clears throat> See, no one ever taught us these things. At least they didn't in my area because I didn't know what a 10K was or a 10Q or what an annual report from a CEO. I'm like, what the ham sandwich are you talking about, right? So understanding and knowing what these things are, are vital to your success in being able to invest. So I know I only shared the five investing myths today. I'll give you the other four tomorrow because I'm short on time because Miss Jojo needs to uh, get it in as well. But thank you for joining for the Financial Confession <coughs> this morning. Um, if there are no questions for me, I'm going to pass that over to my co-host, Miss Jojo. And then, Lynn, they also have to be a lot of, and you may cover this myth tomorrow, is a lot of people say, um, you know, we talk about education. I'm too old to learn this. This is too much for me to learn. You learned that cooking recipe. You learned that new song on the radio. And what's the difference? <laughs> and there's no excuses at all whatsoever. So exactly. saying that you can't learn something or you're not smart enough, don't put yourself down before you even try. Don't do that. At least yeah. try, period. Then you can say something about it. But if you if you put yourself down before you even try, I don't want to hear it. Right. I ain't got no money. I'm broke. I don't know how to do I don't want to hear any of that. We've given you some books to read to get the foundations. Lynn is giving you a free group to go into to learn. I'm in the group. I'm learning right along with everybody else. You cannot say you can't learn something. Your mind capacity is far greater than you imagine. If your mind is only holding the information that it's holding yeah. because that's all you're giving it. If right. you give it more, your brain will do more. But if you give it less, it's going to sit right there with you. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Absolutely. So Jojo, you hit on something that's very profound. And because you brought it up, I think I, I need to go ahead and just address it for just give me 30 seconds. Yeah. Guys, so this is the myth too. We've all heard about compounding interest, right? And you always hear the scenarios. If you put $100 in a month, if you start in your 20s, you'll be a millionaire by the time you right? Get ready to retire. What I want to say to you guys is, yes, that's for the masters, but that's not for us. What is for us is it's never too late to learn how to invest. And when you learn how to invest the right way, right? See, that's the the passive way of investing, where you allow somebody else to take control of your monies 
put right. it in a retirement account, put that $100 a month in over time. And I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. By all means, do that, especially if you're not doing anything else. But what I'm saying to you guys is that <clears throat> the game has been changed for, uh, for me and my family because I learned, I've always gone through and said, what in the heck are these people doing who are living in these, these houses over here in these other neighborhoods that are really close to me? These, and these, my husband calls them mini mansions. What are they doing over there in those mini mansions? I'm telling you guys, they figured out this investing thing that takes it to the nth degree. And when you come into the group, into the class, we'll be talking about it doesn't take your full lifetime from your 20s to retirement age to grow your investment accounts if mm -hmm. you know what you're doing, if you know what the skills are. Yes, I'm talking about long-term investing, but the long-term investing I'm talking about is 10 years, eight to 10 years. I'm not talking about from the time you're 20 to the time you're 66 and a half or 65 and a half. I don't even know what retirement age is anymore, but yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> so looking at that, what are those things that we can do now that are going to be able to grow our money in a, in a eight to 10 year time frame? Because many of us <clears throat> don't have those 45 years because we didn't start investing from the age of 20 something to, to mm -hmm. allow that $100 to compound regularly. But um, it's amazing, guys. But you just got to, you have to put it into practice. You have to put it into a practice and know it's not too late. Doesn't matter how old you are. It's not too late. Learn the skill. Master it for yourself. Teach it to your children so that they can also continue to teach it to their children, right? That's building mm -hmm. generational wealth. That's All right, right. I'm, I'm pulling back, Miss Jojo. That's the end of the financial confession and conversation for today. I promise. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I got you started again. Yes, My bad. <clears throat> yeah, retirement is not an age of heaven. Doesn't matter how much you have, you can get started as long as you know your money. You got to know. You got to know your money. You got to know the foundation. So, um, yeah, you see Trenda's comment? You're so excited because you can see now and you have, mm -hmm. oh, okay, you have the vision. Yes, ma'am. That's where it starts. You got to have the yep, vision. You got a plan for that vision too. Yes, so. yes, yes. yes. <clears throat> Act on that plan. And there you go. <laughs> All right, guys. So for your fearless thought of the day, I want to tell you something. I wanted to tell you today um, on this fearless journey that, a lot of people, well, not a, I'm going to put this in the context of me. You can insert yourself at will. <laughs> that on this journey, that you are in search of wholeness. When you started on this journey, you knew something was missing. You couldn't quite put your finger on it. Couldn't quite figure it out. You probably tried everything, you know, well, let me buy some clothes. Let me go get my hair and my nails done. Let me go get a massage. Let me even go to the doctor. <clears throat> let me figure out something because something is missing. I can't quite put my finger on it, but something is missing. I don't really know what it is. Maybe you try to find it with your mama, your boyfriend, your husband, right? your sister girls. You try to find it with a job. Because you're always trying to feel something that you don't know what needs to be filled, but you know it's empty, but you can't quite put your hands on it. So today, I'm going to tell you what it is. You are in search of wholeness because somewhere along the way, you have lost yourself. Remember I talk all the time? We are learning ourselves and we are finding ourselves on this journey. And right. that is what we are doing. Trina says she's a doer. <laughs> Good job, Trina. She's working on it, too. Yes. On this fearless journey, guys, you are truly in search of wholeness. You are in search of what has been missing out of your life because you may have dropped it off along the way. You may have lost it along the way. Someone may have taken it for you. For me, it was somebody had had taken it away from me. Yeah. And then here's here's my confession for the day. When they took away my my freedom of thought, my freedom of speech, my freedom of me being who I was because I completely changed who I was. When they took away the core and the essence of who I was, and then when I got out of the situation, I was like, 
something's missing, but I can't put my finger on it because life was crazy. And so because life was crazy, I was being reactive instead of proactive. And I had craziness everywhere. Last week, I talked about the two things you have to do and immediately to stop the crazies one you got to stop and be still and be quiet so i had to do that i took a weekend to do that and then number two you've got to figure out what it is that you're searching for and you are searching for wholeness within yourself yes trenda it's been buried there all along and, and you know how it gets buried our titles, we carry so many titles that who we are at our core gets lost sometimes. And so you're searching for it. It wakes you up in the middle of the night. You can't sleep at night. When's the last time you slept all night long? That's because you're in your mind, your body, your spirit is in search of wholeness. It's in search of what you lost, who you lost, who you are. And then until you find it, you're going to constantly be looking for it. Right. So today I just want to tell y'all, if you can't quite put your finger on it today, you can't figure out what it is that's, you know, missing, but you keep coming to the Fearless Morning Show every morning, you're reading the books Lynn and I tell you about, you're on the conferences, you're coming to our events, you are in search of wholeness. Even if you're looking at somebody else, if you're reading your Bible, whatever you're doing, you are in search of wholeness, period. You can't fill it with things. It's not going to be filled with things at all. It's going to take time for you to be quiet, learn yourself, talk to yourself, and figure out what it truly is that you need, what it is that you're missing, and why are you trying to substitute it? Because anything you try to substitute it with is going to be inadequate. It's not going to be enough. Um, and Lynn and I talk about this, and I, so this is another part of my confession. Oh, if I could just get a better job, I got the better job, and it's still missing. <laughs> I was like, what is missing? And you got to figure out, oh, well, if I could just get a new car, well, I got the new car. Well, if I could just get some new clothes, well, I, I got the clothes. Well, if I could just finish the master's degree, I got that. If you could just finish the PhD, and I was about to finish that. And I was like, but what am I looking for? What am I searching for? And so sometimes you, not sometimes, all the time, I can guarantee it, you are in search of wholeness of yourself. Something's missing. You dropped it off along the way. You become a wife, a mama, an auntie, a sister, a brother, a cousin. You become a friend, a listener, a counselor. Honey, we can put on 50,000 titles that we carry and not one of them is self, period. Mm -hmm. So you are in search of your wholeness and you can spend your whole life seeking and searching, substituting for things that are inadequate and it will never be enough. You will always be, and, here, and here's a clue to why, how you know that you're in search of yourself. Number one, you hate being alone. Period. I know some people that it would kill them if they were to sit in a quiet room for 1.5 seconds and listen to themselves. <laughs> Lynn, they got to be on the phone. Even if the room is quiet, they're on the phone. There's something that is constantly taking over their mind so they can't think because they may be afraid of the thoughts that they're going to have and the reality of themselves that they may have to address to change the behavior that they got going on. I'm just saying. Because... <laughs> That's yes, that's a, that's a duck moment because she throws <laughs> it. it's like duck. What? Right? I'm just saying. If you be quiet, <laughs> stop running from yourself. Because here's the thing: the more you run from yourself, the more you run to crazy. The more you run to crazy, the more excuses you're gonna have. The harder life is gonna be. The more frustrated you're gonna be. The more depressed you're gonna be. And then here's the thing. You become so negative that you have no idea how to climb out of negativity. Y'all know that's my pet peeve. I hate a negative. If the first five minutes of our conversation is you complaining, I got to get off the phone because it's draining for me. And I've worked way too hard to build my foundation. And I worked way too hard in search of my wholeness to fulfill it to let somebody else take it away or put holes in it. I can't do that. I'm sorry. I just, I just cannot. So today, I just want to let you know that you are in search of wholeness. You're in search of something that you lost along the way. I encourage you to take that quiet time that I talked about last week and find that, figure it out for yourself because whatever you are substituting it with, 
is inadequate. It's not going to be enough. You're going to need a whole lot of Jesus and a whole lot of prayer. <laughs> Don't lay it on <laughs> I love you, mama. <laughs> it is not a, hey, I'm just speaking in general terms. I'm talking about myself, what I went through and in my search, and I needed a whole bunch of Jesus to help me in search of my wholeness. And if we real about it, we are in search of wholeness for ourselves and only he can give it to us because right. we've lost it. We've lost it along the way and we've lost him because life has just kind of rigmaroled us away and we have, you know, filled him up with some, with other things. You know, I'm busy. I ain't got time. I got to do this. I ain't got time. And he's just sitting there patiently waiting. And let me tell you what I know for sure. If you don't give him some attention, he will get your attention. And you do not want that, my friends. <laughs> you don't want well. that. Well. Sometimes that can be downright nasty and ugly how he gets your attention. But needless to say, he will get it and you will give him the honor and the glory that he deserves. Now you can do that voluntary or involuntarily, whichever way you want to do it. <laughs> but it's going to happen. So you are in search of wholeness today. So... I hope you find it. I encourage you to find it, to uh, experience it today. Let go of some of all that extra stuff that you picked up along the way. Let it go and find out what you need to do for you today. All right. That's my confession and conversation for the fearless thought of the day. I am done. It is Wednesday. We're just trying to make it through the day, Lynn. That is it. Anything you want to add before I, I close out? No, there's, I guys, I just say we just need to keep pushing past all of this craziness in our lives. And that's the point of the Fearless Morning Show for us to have these confessions and conversations about your everyday life and finances. Yep. So just keep joining us each and every morning at 7.15 a.m. Unless mm -hmm. something changes. Other than mm -hmm. that, guys, we thank you for joining us here. Um, for mm -hmm. and, and I'll take over JoJo's line. If your family's not on Facebook, we're also on YouTube, right? There so you go. I'm getting ready to post it. Thank you, friend. Yes. I'm getting ready to post it. <laughs> all right, all right. Yes, we'll go ahead over to YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, y'all, and like it too yes. while you're over there, if you will. That's right. right. Thank so you. So you can receive those notifications. We're looking for at least 500 subscribers. So why don't y'all help a sister out, right? Help some sisters out over here. I yes. posted the link. I post all of our videos every day. So in case you need a refresher, you forgot something Lynn said or want to write down something I said, you can go back and you can just watch them all. Knock yourself out. We won't be afraid. Like it, share it, and comment so that we know that it is um, it is helping somebody. That's yeah. for sure. All right, guys. For those of you who have not read my book, and then if you have your link, I'll post yours. I'm giving away four free chapters of my first book. I posted the link. So if you do not know my story, I wonder how I became the only Live Past Crazy Specialist. You can read the first four chapters of my book for free. And uh, let me know what you think, and we can talk about it maybe tomorrow if you get it. And share it with a friend. Always share the morning show with somebody you know who needs it because, again, once you know, you are charged now to go share it with somebody else because we're giving out some great information. We don't want to keep it to ourselves. What's the quote today, Lynn, from Lucy? What did she say? Yes, you. I'd rather regret the things I have done than to regret the things I have not done. That yep. is, and it's never too late. Right. Right. It it's very it's late. very profound if you sit and think about it for a moment. Yep. Just don't ever don't and please don't use I'm too old. I can't learn nothing. I can't do don't use any of those don't use any excuse. Open up your mind to accept that you can do it your life will be different. Your life will be changed when you change yeah. your mindset of that single thought. I can instead I can't take the T off and keep <laughs> just the C A N. <laughs> yes, one thing guys, I feel I just have to make this little disclaimer or this caveat. Even though we said we'd rather regret the things we have done, that doesn't just give you free license to go out there doing all kind of crazy stuff. Especially um I'm just thinking back to the college days. You know how you do some crazy stuff sometimes. It just doesn't give you the free will to go out there and do crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. There are some stipulations in there now. 
Don't wow. get caught up and be right. like, turn around, pose to the left, pose to the right. Don't be calling Lynn and JoJo. We ain't got money for that kind of crazy. <laughs> right. Right. That's so be That's mindful of govern yourselves accordingly, okay? <laughs> Don't go out there acting a fool, but we are saying challenge yourself a little bit with something you know you should be doing. So right. with that, guys, have a great day. Thank you for joining us on the Fearless Morning Show. We'll see you right in early tomorrow morning at 7.15. Have a good day. Signing off.